Yo, welcome back. So everyone on YouTube has been doing these logic tutorials with turrets that follow your cursor and it'll shoot once you start shooting. Now it's absolutely pointless because if you don't do anything, it doesn't target anything. And if you fly away, it's basically just a dead turret. So let me show you what I've come up with. I'm far away from the turrets and they're already working as they're auto-targeting what's in front of them. I fly towards them, nothing's happened yet, but as soon as I start to shoot, they all shoot where my cursor is shooting. I stop shooting and it goes back to auto targeting the walls or an enemy. So this is a way better logic solution and it's all controlled by this one microprocessor controlling all of them at once. I'm going to give you one more example. I've switched out to using a logic processor just so we can select all the turrets we want because We'll probably be using a couple if we're using an attack map. Now, since we're using four shadows, we should start to be able to break through the wall. But obviously, all these turrets are just auto-targeting anything they see. But now, once we start shooting, you can see how up this is. So instead of just making as many turrets as you can and using brute force, we can start doing it smarter. And then once you get through all these, you'll be able to get through the walls. Wow. Yes, such great gameplay. I think I'll subscribe to this channel right now. Wow. Wow, this is really good. And remember, bros, please like this video because I spend so much time figuring all this crap for you. So the least you can do is like this video. And if we hit 20,000 likes in the next 24 hours, I'll give away these glasses to one subscriber, but only one because I, I, uh, I only have one pair. Now to fully explain how the logic works, we need to create a radar. So I've got the microprocessor here and I've connected up Ripple 1 and Ripple 2. I'm going to use Ripple 1 here to be the radar. So what that means is the processor is gonna work as soon as I move inside its range. At the moment, I'm not inside its range, so nothing works. As soon as I move in, it's working. So that's the first thing to understand create a radar with the most central turret and create the turret that has the longest range as well. There's no point making it the duo because I'll have to get inside this range to make it all work. And the most sensible version would be using the foreshadow because the range is huge. So let's build this from scratch. And one thing to understand is how big is your schematic going to be? Because if you have loads of turrets everywhere for the schematic, you're only going to be able to fit them inside this range for the microprocessor. You might want to create the schematic with a logic processor because you'll be able to fit more inside that circle. But for now, let's just start with a microprocessor, delete this one, and we're calling this Ripple 1 and Ripple 2. Well, we gotta build that radar, so select radar, and we're doing it from Ripple 1. And we need to target us, where the cursor is, so select player. Now, if we fly outside the radar, we want it to target anything. So just leave these to any and any, leave that to one, sort by distance, and we'll call the output radar. So we've created the radar. We now need to use sensors to find out where my cursor is. So get a sensor. We need three, one for the X axis, one for the Y axis, and one for when I'm shooting. So X, Y and I'll use S for shooting. Let's select X, select Y and select shooting. And this is inside the radar, which is the output here. So now that we're able to detect everything, we need to control the ripples. So let's shoot the ripple. So we're shooting ripple one here and the three sensors X, Y and S. We also have a second turret. So ripple two and it's not following my cursor, but if I shoot, it's just shooting the player. So that's one mistake I think quite a few people will make. You need to actually select shoot X 
and shoot Y, which is the cursor. We're back and they're both following and now they're shooting. However, it's still dumb logic. It's not automatically shooting anything once I'm not doing anything. So let's jump into the next step. Now we need to create a jump and an end. And this will make sense as soon as I've positioned it all. So a jump and an end. So if S is true, we want to shoot. Now, how does this read? We're using S here because it means we're shooting. So if we're not shooting, the microprocessor will go down here and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to go to the end and keep rotating, basically making this radar obsolete because we're not taking control of the ripples yet. But if we do start to shoot, it'll jump over and take control of those ripples. Like so. And if you wanted to add more turrets, all you gotta do is just add the Lancers. We'll give them power. And select all the Lancers. And all you do is go to the control. Lancer 1. Lancer 2. And it lets us take control of those two there. So obviously if you want the other three, you just keep on duplicating. Three, four, five. And that's us controlling all the turrets. And obviously if you want all the other turrets, just add them all in. Now I'll show you what I actually have for my setup. For my ripples, I just have ripple one to six here. So all I do is throw down my microprocessor when I'm trying to attack somewhere. I add the ripples and all I do is connect them up and that's me. Got a logic working turret thing. Sweet. 